Welcome to Medical Student Apps Chest X-ray Interpretation In this video tutorial, you will learn to apply the Piper N ABCDE mnemonic to assess the quality of a radiograph and identify simple radiological presentations. We will now begin by reviewing the Piper N ABCDE mnemonic. The mnemonic stands for Patient Information, Inspiration, Penetration, Exposed Area, Rotation, NG Tube, Location, Airway, Breathing, Circulation, Diaphragm and everything else. We will now review each of these in turn beginning with Patient Information. You should always begin by identifying the patient's name and demographic details. Review the clinical history and previous imaging as these may provide valuable evidence in support of your initial diagnosis. The next four items in our mnemonic review the technical quality of the radiograph, starting with inspiration. Inspiration is assessed by counting the anterior ribs. There should be six anterior ribs above the diaphragm. The seventh rib should penetrate through the diaphragm. If the seventh rib is above the diaphragm, this suggests hyperinflation. The next step is to identify how well the x-rays have penetrated the patient's thorax. Penetration is assessed by identifying the outline of the thoracic vertebrae through the heart shadow. This radiograph is poorly penetrated. Note how you cannot see the outline of the thoracic vertebrae. Good X-ray penetrance is important because it helps you to identify pathology lying behind the heart shadow. Exposed area. You must be able to see all of the lung zones on the radiograph. If you cannot see them, you will not be able to make a reliable diagnosis. The next step is to assess rotation. This can be done by looking at the medial edges of the clavicles and drawing a line through the adjacent spinous processes. The distance between the edge of the clavicles and the line should be equal on each side. If the distances are unequal, this suggests that rotation is present. This completes a review of the technical quality of the radiograph. The next step is to review whether there are any abnormalities present. NG tube location Junior doctors are frequently asked to confirm the location of NG tubes. If the tube is correctly placed, the tip should be visible in the gas bubble of the stomach. In this radiograph, notice the location of the tip in the right lower zone. Feeding through this should be avoided. Airway the trachea sits in the midline and bifurcates at the carina into the left and right main bronchus. You should be aware of three main presentations, the normal, deviated and narrowed airway. We have already looked at the normal airway in the previous slide, so let's take a look at the deviated airway. There are many causes of tracheal deviation, but they can be generally classified into those diseases that pull the trachea towards the affected side, as demonstrated here, and those diseases that push the trachea away from the affected side, as shown here. Now let's take a look at the narrowed airway. This is an uncommon presentation and usually occurs due to malignancy. Having reviewed airway abnormalities, the next step is to look at breathing. Quickly scan all six lung zones. Compare them and consider whether they appear normal, too white, too dark or have too many lines. Let's now take a look at the white lung. Common causes of the white lung include collapse, effusion and consolidation. 
Collapse presents with uniform opacity and tracheal deviation towards the affected side. Note however that tracheal deviation does not always occur. In this image, showing right upper lobe collapse, there is no tracheal deviation. Effusion Effusion presents with uniform opacity and tracheal deviation pushed away from the affected side. Consolidation presents as localised patchy opacity with air bronchograms. Now we shall look at the dark lung. The dark lung is caused by two presentations. The first is COPD. This presents with hyperinflation, low flat diaphragm and a stretched heart border. The second presentation is pneumothorax. Pneumothorax presents with increased radiolucency and shrunken lung markings. Finally, we look at the lung with too many lines. Here there are two main presentations. Let's start by looking at the fibrotic lung. In the fibrotic lung, you should look for the lines which indicate reticular shadowing. You may also see tiny opacities which indicate nodules. This image shows reticular nodular shadowing. Note there are many causes of fibrotic lung disease. Some are listed here. The second presentation is pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema presents as bilateral symmetrical opacity. There may also be cardiomegaly and pleural effusion present. After reviewing the lung zones, look at the hyla. Hyla contain the pulmonary vessels and lymph nodes. They may become more prominent in some diseases. Bilateral hyla lymphadenopathy is a frequent presentation seen in exams. Whenever you see this presentation, your differential should include sarcoidosis, tuberculosis and lymphoma. Circulation In this section of our mnemonic, we review the heart silhouette. Trace the silhouette, paying particular attention to the aortic knuckle and the left and right heart borders. Look for swelling of these borders, which is suggestive of an aortic or ventricular aneurysm. Note that loss of the heart border is suggestive of disease in the adjacent lung lobe. For example, in this image you can see loss of the right heart border caused by right middle lobe consolidation. In this image there is loss of the left heart border caused by pathology in the lingular region of the upper left lobe. After tracing the borders, the next step is to look at the heart size. Measure the heart and thorax at their widest points. Divide one by the other. The result should be less than 0.5. If it is greater than 0.5, this suggests cardiomegaly. Note that heart size can only reliably be measured in a PA radiograph. An AP radiograph commonly distorts the size of the heart. Diaphragm In the normal radiograph, the right hemidiaphragm is superior to the left because it is displaced upward by the liver. You should look for tenting of the diaphragm caused by phrenic nerve palsy or fibrosis and white plaques caused by asbestosis. Assess both costophrenic angles. Blunting of the costophrenic angles occurs in small pleural effusions, shown here. Look below the diaphragm, at the gas bubble in the stomach, and for any free air beneath the diaphragm that suggests either a perforated stomach, bowel, or recent surgery.
Finally, we review everything else, starting with soft tissues. Look for swelling, surgical emphysema and breast shadows. Next, look at the bones for any fractures or dislocations. Look at the clavicles, the scapula and both humeruses. Trace the outline of each individual rib. And finally, look for medical implements such as pacemakers and central lines. This concludes our review of the Piper N ABCD mnemonic. We've covered an awful lot of material, so here is a summary for you to pause and print.